every cell in a notebook has a mode. This one contains text, and its type is Markdown. Another way to write text, or to create charts and do more complex things, is to use HTML. Any type of code, including calculations, lives in JavaScript cells. Markdown is what is called a markup language, hence the name, which is a pun. If you're just writing text, you can mostly ignore it. But if you want to style the text, insert hyperlinks, or add formatting, like bulleted lists, the syntax is very straightforward. For example, to create emphasis using italics, use a single pair of asterisks or underscores around the text you want to emphasize. For a bit more oomph, use two asterisks or underscores to create bold text. You can create hyperlinks with this pattern. This might look complicated, but there are two shortcuts for this. Select the text that you want to use for the link and press Command K or Control K to insert the link code. Then just paste the URL and get the link. Or, much easier, just simply select the text you want to use for the link and then paste the URL over it. Observable will insert the correct markdown code for you. The toolbar at the bottom of the page also includes formatting buttons to help you with all of this. Text is incredibly important in notebooks because it allows you to add reader-friendly context, interpretation, and explanation, links to the materials, and more. The other way to write text is HTML, or the Hypertext Markup Language. Every website is either written in HTML, or, more likely these days, generates HTML for your browser to render as the page that you see. Even Markdown has to be translated to HTML for your browser to understand, but Observable handles that for you. An HTML cell is also just text to begin with, but it can use HTML tags to style your text, and you can use it to create all sorts of things, like charts. The primary cell mode used in Observable is the JavaScript cell. JavaScript cells produce the many useful inputs and charts that you can insert using the new cell menu, and any code you write yourself, of course. Here's an example of two JavaScript cells that create a line chart and a slider that allows you to change the amount of smoothing that is applied to the data. Both Markdown and HTML cells can include variables and arbitrary code using what is called interpolation. The syntax for this is the same in both cases. A dollar sign, an opening curly brace, the name of the variable, and the closing curly brace. You can also call functions this way or use more complex code. This example uses interpolation in a markdown cell to turn a model calculation into a simple sentence. Note how it contains function calls to a format money function and an inlet calculation to compute the total cost of the mortgage in our very simplified mortgage model. You can also use variables within HTML tags, for example, to change the styling of this text. I can change the text color, the font weight, and whether it's italics or not. The mode of a cell can be changed at any time by clicking the menu on the left of the editing window and selecting the new mode. This is handy if you picked the wrong one by mistake or decided you wanted to write more text instead of code, for example. JavaScript cells can also contain Markdown and HTML content. In fact, this is how observable cell modes used to work. You might still see notebooks where a cell begins with a cryptic looking MD and a backtick, or HTML and a backtick. This lets you include Markdown or HTML code inside of a JavaScript cell, which can still be useful, but it's much easier now to just change the cell mode using the menu on the left side of the cell. Now that you're familiar with cell types on Observable, learn about its reactive data flow model next. <laughs>